You can see him lying like in a sleeping position. The body is a replica, it's a reconstruction based on the photos from the time when he was excavated. Some mysteries are buried for a reason. The Tolan Man, an ancient body discovered in a bog, has been a museum icon for decades, famous for his shockingly lifelike face. The official story was that he was a sacrifice, meeting a noble end. But not all things are what they seem. A groundbreaking new analysis of his DNA in his last meal has peeled back the layers of this ancient mystery, and what many overlooked is the evidence hidden within. A bog body is a human corpse of some sort that was submerged within the bog, or a wetland environment, and has become uh, preserved within the environmental context that's found there. The truth of his final days is a shocking tale of sickness and desperation, culminating in a ritual far more sinister than a simple offering. The Meal of a Condemned Man Using powerful mass spectrometry, they analyzed every last protein and grain. On the surface, it was a humble porridge made of barley, flax seeds, and the seeds of a common weed called pale persicaria. To put it mildly, this wasn't the feast of a king or a revered offering. This was the meal of a poor farmer, something slapped together with whatever was on hand. The barley made up 60% of the meal, with flax adding another 30. They even found traces of fatty fish, likely eel pout, which was a surprise for someone living inland. But the thing nobody tells you is that the most important clues weren't the ingredients themselves, but what was living inside them. The analysis revealed that the Tolan man was riddled with parasites. It wasn't just one or two. His gut was a breeding ground for multiple infections. They found over 100 whipworm eggs, evidence of thorny-headed worms, and even the remnants of a giant tapeworm that can grow up to 30 feet long in a human host. These aren't the kind of infections a healthy, well-fed person gets. Whipworm is spread through poor sanitation, often from food or water contaminated with human waste. Tapeworms come from eating raw or undercooked meat and fish. What this discovery painted was not a picture of a cherished individual, but of a man living in squalor, in poor health, and on the fringes of society. This was a massive wow factor for archaeologists. The presence of so many parasites suggested his immune system was likely compromised. He was probably weak, malnourished, and suffering. This completely changes the narrative. Why would a community choose a sick, parasite-infested man as their sacred offering to the gods? It just didn't add up. Many people are crazy about the idea of noble sacrifices, but the science was pointing in a much darker direction. This wasn't a man being honored. The evidence suggested this was a man being disposed of. The humble, gritty porridge wasn't a ritual meal. It was likely just another day's food. The fish he ate was likely undercooked, which is how he got the tapeworm in the first place. The researchers even determined he ate this grim meal between 12 and 24 hours before his life ended. This single scientific test shifted the entire mystery from a religious question to a criminal one. His final hours were spent with a stomach full of worms, eating a peasant's gruel. The Man Who Shouldn't Exist Long before science could peer inside his stomach, the Tolan Man's story began with his face. In May of 1950, two brothers were cutting peat for fuel in the Bjelskovdal bog in Denmark when they struck something soft. About eight feet down, they uncovered a body so astonishingly well-preserved that they immediately thought they had found a recent victim. The man's face was peaceful, his eyes gently closed, his lips in a faint smile. Wrinkles lined his forehead and eyes, and a day's worth of stubble covered his chin. He looked like he had just laid down for a nap. It was only when they noticed the leather rope coiled tightly around his neck that they realized this was no ordinary discovery. The authorities soon confirmed he was ancient, a ghost from the Iron Age. The unique chemistry of the peat bog, cold, acidic, and low in oxygen, had worked a miracle of preservation. The sphagnum moss had tanned his skin, turning it into leather and preserving him in stunning detail, right down to his fingerprints. He was about 5 feet 3 inches tall and weighed around 120 pounds. He was naked except for a pointed leather cap made of sheepskin and a smooth leather belt around his waist. He was curled on his side in a fetal position, as if sleeping. What many overlooked at first was just how serene he appeared. 
Autopsies in the 1950s confirmed he had perished by hanging. The rope had crushed his throat, but there were no other marks on his body. There were no signs of a struggle, no defensive wounds. It seemed he had gone to his end willingly, even peacefully. This is what cemented the noble sacrifice theory for over 70 years. Scholars pointed to the writings of the Roman historian Tacitus, who described Germanic tribes in the region hanging people from trees as offerings to their gods. The peaceful expression, the careful placement of the body in the bog, it all fit the narrative of a deeply religious ceremony. A bog was seen as a gateway to the supernatural world, a place where you could communicate with the gods. What better offering than a human life, given willingly? For decades, millions of visitors have gazed upon his face in the Silkeborg Museum, seeing a man who died for his people's beliefs. But the science of his last meal shatters that illusion. The peaceful face now looks like a mask, hiding a grim reality. If he was a sick outcast, why did he look so calm? Some have suggested he was sedated, perhaps given hallucinogenic herbs before the final act. Others wonder if, after a life of sickness and poverty, he was simply resigned to his fate. The bog preserved his skin, but it couldn't tell us what was in his mind. The lack of struggle became less about willingness and more about inability. A man weakened by multiple parasitic infections would not have had the strength to fight back. The serene face wasn't a sign of peace, it was a symptom of his suffering. An Iron Age Execution the Tolan man wasn't alone in the bog. The thing is, his discovery was just one piece of a much larger and more disturbing puzzle scattered across the wetlands of northern Europe. Over the centuries, more than 1,000 bog bodies have been found, from Ireland to Poland, all dating back to the Iron Age. And many of them show the same pattern of extreme violence. Not far from where the Tolan man was found, another body was discovered, the Elling woman. She too had been hanged, her hair elaborately braided before being placed in the bog. In the same region, the body of a young boy, only five to seven years old, was found with a similar noose. This wasn't a one-time event, it was a tradition. This is where the debate gets heated. Was this a widespread religious practice or was it a brutal form of capital punishment? The lines are incredibly blurry. For Iron Age people, religion and law were one and the same. An offense against the tribe was an offense against the gods. Tacitus, the Roman historian, also wrote that these tribes would punish cowards, deserters, and those guilty of unnatural vice by pressing them into bogs under a wicker hurdle. So hanging wasn't just for sacrifice, it was also a method of execution. The bog served a dual purpose. It was a portal to the gods and a place to dispose of societies unwanted. A chilling example from Britain, Lindo Man, shows just how brutal these rituals could be. He didn't just perish from one thing, he suffered what archaeologists call a triple demise. He was garroted, his throat was slit, and he was bludgeoned on the head. Inside his stomach, they found mistletoe pollen, a sacred plant to the druids. But like the Tolan Man, he also had whipworms and tapeworms. So what was he? A sacred druidic offering or a punished criminal? The answer is likely both. He was executed in a highly ritualized way. This brings us back to the Tolan man. What crime could he have committed? Given his poor health and the evidence of a humble diet, he wasn't a warrior or a chieftain. He was a common man. His ailment, brought on by parasites, might have made him unable to work. In a small, tight-knit community struggling for survival, a person who couldn't contribute could be seen as a burden, a drain on precious resources. His end could have been a form of ritualized cleansing, removing a tainted individual from the community to appease the gods and restore balance. The hanging, the placement in the bog, it was all part of a ceremony designed to make an act of punishment feel like a sacred duty. His life ended not as an honor, but because he was no longer useful. The Bog's Grim Secret So what is the final verdict from science? After the shocking revelations from his last meal, scientists went back for the ultimate clue, his DNA. The acid in the bog had destroyed most of his bones, making it impossible to get a full nuclear DNA sequence, the kind that reveals everything about a person's ancestry and even physical traits. 
But in one of those small miracles that only science can pull off, researchers managed to extract fragments of mitochondrial DNA, which is passed down through the mother's line. The results delivered yet another twist to the Tolan man story. They showed he wasn't a foreigner, invader, or captured slave. His genetic signature, haplogroup H5, was and still is common in Scandinavia. He was as local as they come. Then came isotope analysis, the microscopic chemical fingerprints hidden in his hair, teeth, and tissues. These isotopes preserve a record of what a person eats and drinks over years. The analysis revealed that everything he consumed, from his barley porridge to the water he drank, came from the Jutland region of Denmark. He had lived and died right there, among his own people. This wasn't the tale of an outsider being sacrificed for the sins of the tribe, it was a story of a community turning against one of its own. When you put all the pieces together, the picture that emerges is haunting. The Tolan man was likely a middle-aged farmer, somewhere in his 40s, who lived a hard, rural life. His diet was simple, grains, seeds, and occasional meat, and his health was poor. Modern medical analysis of his intestines revealed evidence of multiple parasites, including whipworm and tapeworm, likely caused by contaminated food and dirty water. His village, like many in that era, was plagued by disease and famine. To survive, people needed someone to blame, and in ancient societies, misfortune often required a sacrifice. But here's where the story gets darker and stranger. The neat scientific conclusion says he was executed as part of a ritual, possibly to restore harmony or please the gods. Yet some researchers have started asking uncomfortable questions. What if the Tolan man wasn't a willing participant at all? What if the ritual was a convenient excuse for something far more human? Fear, revenge, or even politics? Imagine this, a small tribe living through a brutal winter. Crops fail, people starve, diseases spread. The shaman declares that the gods are angry, someone must pay, and then, conveniently, a man who's already weak, sick, and possibly accused of theft or betrayal becomes the perfect scapegoat. The act is dressed up as a holy offering, but it's really a public execution wrapped in religion. Still, that's the rational explanation. Others aren't so sure it's the whole story. Some wild theories go even deeper into the bog. A few scholars and fringe historians have noticed that several bog bodies across northern Europe, like Grabal Man and Wide Girl, were all preserved in eerily similar conditions, almost as if chosen intentionally for it. What if these people weren't just offerings to the gods, but something else entirely? An attempt to communicate with forces beyond death. One theory suggests the bogs themselves were seen as gateways to another world. In ancient Norse mythology, wetlands were liminal spaces neither land nor water, where spirits could pass between realms. That could mean the Tolan man's people didn't just eliminate him to end his life. They might have believed they were sending him somewhere, perhaps to deliver a message or plea to whatever deities ruled the underworld. The rope around his neck might not have been meant purely for execution. It could have been the symbolic bridge connecting this world to the next. Even more bizarre are the claims that Tolan Man may not have been eliminated at all, but placed in a suspended state, a proto-ritual of preservation. Some suggest his calm, serene expression wasn't from resignation, but from something more chemical. Could they have used herbs or natural sedatives before the hanging? His stomach contents hint at strange seeds and fungi, some of which have mild psychoactive properties. Was he drugged into a trance before death? Was the ritual meant to keep him half alive, bridging the world of the living and the divine? And then there's the question no one can quite answer, why the bog preserved him so perfectly. Scientists explain it as chemistry, the acid, the lack of oxygen, and the cool temperatures acting like nature's refrigerator. But others point to something eerie, dozens of bodies preserved the same way in different places as if chosen by design. Were ancient people aware of this effect? Was the Tolan man a victim of brutal justice or a necessary sacrifice for his people's survival? Let us know your thoughts below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more mysteries solved by science.